Alrighty, we just watched the first two episodes of Season 3 of Boku no Hero Academia, and before you even ask, yes, we watched Season 3 with me not having seen Season 2 at all, and, and you I not having... And I just jumped right into it. <laughs> and funnily enough, they prepared for that. Because Episode 1 of Season 3 is basically a recap episode. That's mm -hmm. It's not quite a recap episode, there's enough plot... If anything, I would say it's a perfect introductory episode for anybody who's trying to bandwagon jump on Boku no Hero. Like, if you wanted to get one of your... If you wanted to tell a friend, like, hey, you don't have to watch all 39 episodes. Just jump in here, watch this episode, and you'll understand. It explains everything. Yeah. Um, I even felt, coming in, like, not having seen season two, I was like, oh, well, now I know what happened. Like... <laughs> I guess I'm prepared, and I'm confident that if anything else came up I needed to know, it would be it would be clear. Like Yeah, and they did it in kind of a fun way, too. Like, it was a beach episode, and they, like, kept switching between... Well, a pool episode. Oh, it was a pool. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever, it was a pool episode. Um, yeah, it just was kind of a fun way to do it. Um, I appreciated it. I felt yeah. like I was up to date. You know, everybody talks about this show, so I, like, know the conceit of it. And, right. And the characters, so... It was really funny that they put that in there because we had tried to do the same thing with season three of Full Metal Panic, oh, where boy. I just like with this, I had not seen season two, only season one, and you hadn't seen any of it. But Full Metal Panic, in spite of the fact that season three came like fourteen years after season two, just jumps in like like no time has passed at all, like no reintroduction, no like charming like, uh, fun scenes with the characters. It's just, like, straight drama right off the bat. And it was totally charmless, and we were not interested. And, like, this one, on the other hand, is, like, exactly what you <coughs> should do in that situation, except it's only a year later. So it was probably unnecessary for most people, but hey. Yeah. Um, I bet there are a lot of people who bandwagon jump on the show. Yeah. Um, because it's super popular. And, right. And, you know, it's, you know, it's on, it's on fucking Toonami and shit, like... I'm the type of person who might just sit... Well, if, obviously if not If I anymore, was but. watching anime on TV, I would definitely just come back and watch this every week. Because I did oh, that yeah. with Bleach, and like I like the show more than, than later seasons of Bleach. I would say that this is the most watchable shonen. Where it's yeah. just like, you look at it, and you immediately know what's going on. You immediately understand the characters just by looking at them. And like it's just fun and easy to sit through like there's no there's nothing wrong with it <coughs> other than the fact that there is nothing original about it the fact that like every single thing in it is something you've seen before and like but like it's done in such a way that like you so w we were saying that uh, obviously this show's been compared to naruto extensively since it's you know it's very fucking similar um but watching episode two of season three, I literally felt like I was watching Naruto. Mm -hmm. Like, not... Like, I was getting weird nostalgia for Naruto, even though it's not Naruto. But, like, I was feeling like, oh, it's like the tuning exams again, you know? Like, I feel like I'm back. But, like, whereas it's not so easy to go back and rewatch Naruto, because there's ass loads of filler, and the production quality's all over the place, and it goes downhill, and you know that you're gonna have to get to Shippuden at some point, yeah. and, like, when you're watching this, you're like, oh, everything's fine. It's like watching Naruto guilt-free. Um, but on the other side of that coin, it also feels like I've already seen it before. Like, this, the, the second episode of this season is at the start of, like, a training arc to, like, get have everybody upgrade their powers, and... My Hero Academia moves very slow. Like, it really takes its time. It's got a huge cast, so you, you're you constantly having to see, like, what's going on with every single fucking character. So, like... Like, all 20-plus of them. Yeah, so, like, every time there's anything happens, you're going through, like, this huge amount of reactions. Um, and so it just, it just takes up so much time that... You, you end up feeling like progress happens very slowly. And to think that we're at, you know, season three, and, you know, season two was 26 episodes long. So we're, like, we're on episode, like, 40, and it's, like, a very casual training arc for, like, building towards something bigger that's going to happen. But, like, 
it's like, man, we're this deep into the show and they're still doing this is a little bit of how I felt, you know? Um, how did you feel watching episode two as somebody who had not seen anything? Pretty the... similarly. Uh, the characters are all really quirky and fun and it's pretty to look at, but, you know, it's shonen. It's not really right. my the thing that I would choose to watch, but I would definitely watch it because I, I like anime. Yeah, it's like... it's like if you had nothing to do and you just wanted to watch a long yeah. show. And, like, frankly, the fact that it's not over yet, like, I feel as this is this is a show that I would rather just wait for it to be completed. And I don't care how long that takes. I don't care if it takes ten years because I'm in no hurry to watch this. Like, there's nothing that fills me with a sense of urgency because I don't participate in the conversation surrounding shows, obviously, or I would have been watching it weekly, you know, like... I don't really care about being up to date on it. When I hear things about it, it just sounds like I could fill in the blanks in my head. Like, yeah. people talk about, oh, like, there was this, cr like, finally we got to the fight between All Might and whoever. And, like, just hearing the premise of the fight, I think I understand what led up to it and yeah. what's exciting about it, you and know? And if you're really super invested in the story, I feel like you would just pick up the manga at that point because it's right. a year between seasons, which is a really long time to, yeah. to wait. And I mean, I, I could see this being one of those where I would be willing to both read the manga and watch the anime, mm -hmm. but like, I just would rather just wait for it to be over. Yeah. Like, uh, why not? Because it's such a, it's such a bingeable show. It's something that I could easily see just like clicking next, 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 just going through, you know, like I do with Hunter x Hunter or something, but it's nowhere near as inventive or exciting as Hunter x Hunter. And therefore like, whereas with that show, as soon as I got the ball rolling, I was like, I can't stop. I need to see it all. With this one, I'm just like, oh, I feel like I know exactly what's happening. Like, there's no urgency at all. Um, so maybe I'll, I mean, I'm not considering this, like, failed no. per se. I marked it as dropped on Mal just because I don't intend on getting back to it anytime soon. But, like... I mean, if you did, you'd probably start back from where you left off. Right, I'd start back like, from season two. Um... Or even just start back from the beginning if it took long enough um, for this show to finish. Because, I mean, this is going to be a long-running shonen. It's very successful. It's, you know, the the manga I don't think is anywhere close to ending. I mean, it moves so slowly that I highly doubt that it's barreling to conclusion or anything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, if this thing runs for another five to ten years, then... I'm never going to keep I mean, up with I feel it like on a yearly milk basis. This property as long as they fucking can cuz yeah. they have like spin-off mangas and stuff like Oh yeah. It's a it's a it's one of the biggest things in jump, yeah. you know, and it's a worldwide success. So like there's every incentive on all parties to just keep doing it and like Studio Bones historically has never done a super long-running series. Like they used to just make up their own endings for shows. It'd be like 50 episodes and then they just bullshit their own thing. And But then they kind of, you know, redid Full Metal Alchemist and did the whole story. And like they now that they're doing things where they're just doing it in chunks and taking time, it feels like there's no reason that this couldn't go on forever unless just nobody was interested, which obviously everybody is. So like... Uh, yeah, I have every reason to think that this is going to go on for a long time. And being as I know I will never keep up with it yearly, I might as well wait. Uh, yeah, it's not unique enough to, to want to keep up with yearly unless, no. like, you know, you really are a big shonen guy. Or just, like, you only watch so many... Like, if you aren't constantly watching shows and, like, you... I think of someone like Tom, our housemate, who doesn't really watch anime actively. No, he just, like, watches anime. what his friends yeah. are watching. And so, like, My Hero is good, so he watches it and he talks about it with his friends and he gets to participate in the community element of it and, like, have a show to watch every week. I don't watch anything weekly, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, it just doesn't make sense for me in the same way that it might for other people. But I think it's cool that it's on Toonami, finally. Yeah, and, like, it's... Like you, you said before, like, if we were watching Toonami, like, I would watch this. Yeah, like, definitely. I think back to my, you know, my childhood when watching anime meant turning on the TV on Saturday and sitting through whatever was on, and, like, I would skip shows that I really didn't care for, that I thought were boring, but, like, this is a show I would easily watch yeah. every single weekend, watch probably both showings of each episode, you know, <laughs> because it's so watchable. But, uh, yeah. All right, that's enough about Boku no Boku 
Hero no Firo. Zero no Biro. Liro. We watched the first episode of Card Captor Sakura, Clear Card Hen, and uh, I was just. The word that was at the center of my mind that I couldn't dispel was uninspired. I don't really get why Card Captor Sakura has come back after like 20 years to tell this story. I mean, not that we've really gotten yeah. into the story yet, but um... I think Clamp just wanted to continue the manga because they've been doing that with a lot of their um, yeah. IPs. Ever since they wrapped up uh, Holic and Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle um, and Kobato, it seems like they've just been returning to their old stories and just continuing them. Uh, they've continued Holic, they're continuing uh, Legal Drug, and continuing Card Captors. And this, the manga started in 2016. It's still going for the Clear Card arc, but like, what they've done is just the most basic possible idea of how to make a sequel to Card Captor Sakura. It's like, it just picks up like a year later. Um, the whole first episode is just reintroducing all the characters, assuring you that... It's really weird that it's set in, like, modern day, and they're all emailing, That's and That's very strange. It's, like, one year later, but it's modern times, so it's that makes like, no fucking sense. The show, its basis is in 90s nostalgia, and then to have it just be like, now we're in 2018. It's, it's like a trend with Madhouse where they've been doing a lot of like 90s adaptations where they modernize them, like Parasite and shit, but like it's really weird when it's a direct sequel. Yeah, I mean, I would figure the manga is probably like that. Yeah. That Clamp's just like, oh, well, we can make it appeal to people by uh, yeah, like putting smartphones in. Youths. But like, why would... I feel like the only people who are going to care about a sequel to Card Captor Sakura are people who are nostalgic for the original. Yeah. Like, it'd be different if this was... Like, most Magical Girl shows will have new incarnations every year or every couple of years because the audience has grown up. Like, at some point, like... like Precure is not the best example because it's every single year, but, like, something like uh, Prepara, like... Every few years, it's like, yeah, you've got the girls when they're, like, five or six, and then they get too old for it, and, and then you make a new one. And you make a new one. Right, for the new generation. the essence of Magical Girl. It's that innocence. Right. It's that time and place. And so to you bring Cardcaptor Sakura back after 20 years, but to only have the story take place one year later... It's weird. It's like, fuck. so you're, now you're making a show for, ostensibly, for current middle school girls who will have never seen the original Card Cat to Sakura, or if they did try to go back and watch it, it'll feel dated to them, you know? And granted, Card Cat to Sakura holds up very well. It mm -hmm. is a show that you can easily go back and watch, um, but, like, you know, it's in 4 by 3 aspect ratio and drawn on cells. Like, some young people are just not gonna have that. And, like, it's 70 episodes, so it's not such an easy, just go back and fucking marathon kind of show, especially because it feel every episode feels long as shit, which is why we haven't gotten around to finishing it together. Uh, I've seen the whole show, but uh, you've only seen, I think, a few episodes. Yeah, and I enjoyed what I saw, and I would continue watching it when I have time. Right. Um, but this show also felt eternally long. It did. And In it all was, the bad ways. It just is like, <laughs> oh, hey, look, nothing's changed. It's all the people who you remember, and they're exactly in the state that they, that you left them in. But Except like, for that comfy aesthetic that in the world they lived in that yeah. made sense is now right. looks really terrible and... Yeah. It's not, like, ugly, but when it When they isn't... go into, like, the weird, like, dream realm or whatever, yeah. like... It looks bad, or it has like all like the glass shards. I never like, wanted to her. see Card Kept Sakura with CG. Yeah. I never wanted to see That's CG fair. classmates or CG dragons in Card Kept Sakura. I never wanted to see just like basic ass. Like, uh, the original had a lot more life to it, it had more like fun, quirky animation moments, and I don't know, uh, you know, it's the same director, Morio Asaka. Um, been around forever. He did Ore Monogatari a couple years ago with probably the same team. Um, 
I don't know if I just like his style more in 4 by 3 aspect ratio or what, but, like, the visuals were a huge part of why I liked the original card captors. Mm -hmm. Because, like, as far as Magical Girl shows go, it's one of the best looking. It's got an amazing color palette. It's got great shot compositions all the time. Great animation. This one just felt like baseline. It was, like, good enough. Good enough that you're not going to complain, but not so good that it's going to impress with the way that the original did, yeah. you know? And, again, like, the characters just feel like they're there. It's just like, hey, they're... Like, Sakura's still fighting with her brother over the same shit that she was in episode one of the original series. Seems out of place to me when she's now a middle school student and after the after the whole plot of the first show has happened. And it, it almost feels like this show, even though it is a sequel and obviously the plot did happen, it feels almost like it's reset the characters back to, like, a state before plot had occurred to them, you know? Because when you have, like, the, the original show, like, a significant amount of the second half is dedicated to plot, and there's, like, a whole long ending arc. Like, it resolves everything. The plot is fully fleshed out, fully complete. There was nothing to add. So the only way to no do a reason sequel... to do a sequel. Right. The <laughs> only way to do it would be to create a new story. Well, how do you create a new story... With the same characters. With the same characters and the same premise. Well, you just make literally the same show. It's, it's just start it from the beginning and like... smartphones. Right. So it's, it's just so uninspired. It's like we just wanted to make Cardcaptor Sakura again, because it's a, you know, a popular nostalgia property, and uh, why not? But like... How much more interesting could it have been if they had made it wildly different? Show me Sakura as an adult. Show me a new generation of card captor. Maybe Sakura's daughter or something. Like, I don't want to just have the same fucking show aged up because I could just watch the original. It's still yeah. there. I don't need clear card hen. Oh, uh, boy. So, I mean, I, I can't speak for the whole show because we didn't watch the whole thing, but the fact that the manga is still going and the anime has concluded at 22 episodes. I don't know if they'll make another season. I don't know how long the manga intends to go. I don't know what kind of story it intends to tell. But, like, what I've seen here was thoroughly unimpressive and made me feel like, all right, well, this is just a cash-in sequel, like, which is what it looks like from the outside, you know? Mm -hmm. Um... So yeah, uh, I'd have to be swayed pretty hard, like, I'd have to hear that it actually, like, really fleshes out the characters no, and has all this meaningful watch depth. I'd rather the rest of the OG. Right. I really feel like a lot of this has to do with the source material, because Clamp has, like, gone downhill. Like It's true, they have not really been relevant in a while, and they're just kind of reviving yeah, a bunch of their most popular so properties. I would not have high hopes for this. No. Uh, alright. That's it. Fuck that show. Uh, we just watched the first, like, nine and a half minutes of Legend of the Galactic Heroes, D's, D's nuts. nuts. And you've never seen any of the original show. No. So, with your totally blank slate take, how do you feel about My this? My baby eyes. Well, there was, like, no animation. We watched about ten minutes of the show. Um, it was a bunch of pretty boys in chairs and talking around about planets and shit. And, uh, sucked. I... Gay. This <laughs> show is painful for me. I've only seen the first 28 episodes of the original, but I do like it. It is a great show. I just haven't gotten around to the rest because it's long as shit. And it is very slow, and it is very boring, but it's not boring the same way as how this is boring. This is a show that is unnecessarily taking what is meant to be a slow, plodding, methodical, um, insanely formal uh, story and trying to, like, gussy it up and modernize it in a way that really reminded me of the Star Trek movie Except the the J.J. Abrams one. Except that at least that was actually exciting. Yeah. This is, like, it's just the same boring story, but with, like, gaudy bullshit everywhere. Hideous fucking CG all over the place. 
just like way unnecessary like dramatic music and fucking the character designs are god awful and and you're just staring at them talking, and it looks bad. So once upon a time, I made a video called The Importance of Presentation in Strong Anime Narratives. A video that currently is responsible for my channel having gone down for the last three weeks, and I think it's still uh, down, but it is. I think it's in my Patreon um, uh, archive. That video is about Legend of the Galactic Heroes, and about how... The way that they presented the original show gave so much gravity to what was happening because it was very stark and minimal in its presentation. There was only classical music. Only. Never any, like, original score. All classical. Usually quiet. Every scene, the characters are constantly speaking, like, in, like absurd amounts of formalities like literally like a sixth of all the dialogue in Legend of Galactic Heroes is just formalities um and like it's very rigid and proper because it feels like a real military operation and one of the most noteworthy things and I, I learned about this because of Baccaraptor who praised this to high heaven is that even though there are hundreds of characters in the show hundreds of named characters not one has hair in front of their eyes. Ever. You know why? Because in a realistic military setting, you're not gonna have hair in front of your eyes. That would be against regulation. And so no matter how gaudy, even if they have long hair, they would always have bangs, always trimmed above the eyes, and it gave the show a sense of weight and gravitas. In this show, they look terrible. Hair all in front of the eyes, generic pretty boys, their faces don't have the same, like, solidness as in the original. Like, they all have weirdly round faces when they're supposed to be, like, Germanic characters. Like, that's part of the, the, did you even get the sense that those guys were German? Like. I just thought they were pretty boys. Like, they're supposed to be, like, they all have German I mean, names and yeah, shit, Yeah, I you know? knew they were German because they were, like, I mean, they're not serious. literally German, but, like, they, they're meant to give the image of like, a Germanic force because their military, the, the the stylization of that side is inspired heavily by, you know, German um, military. And, like, cool. the Free Planets Alliance is more of a American type of, like, uh, feel. But, like, just... The... Just nothing about this had that sense of gravity. It just felt like some space show. It felt like Titania, which is the the show I was comparing Legend of Galactic Heroes against in the video, um, which is from the same author. And, like, it just goes to show, like, how different something can feel when you treat it with that sense of pomp and circumstance versus when it's just a visual clusterfuck. And, like... They also skip a lot of the the boring but endearing details. Like the in this episode it just starts off with um fucking Reinhardt and Kirchi Ice just having some like gay dialogue together. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so in the original show, yes, the characters are largely pretty boys. And Reinhard, our guy, his childhood friend Kirchi Ice, he's very like emotionally attached to, and they became a very popular ship over time this show feels like it already knows that it already is aware that they're a popular ship and is just rolling that ball out right from the get-go like let's make sure you know these guys are very shippable look, look at these pretty boys talking, talking about, about how tall, how tall they, are. they are as compared to each other and like then you've got he's having this conversation with these four like uh generals who um who are like you know doubting his plan but in the original show, one of the first things that happens is this long, boring scene of each of those four guys getting off of a plane and getting onto this, like, automatic walkway and, like, us having to be extensively introduced to who each of them are, like, their rank and file position, and then, like, when they talk to each other, everybody has to, like, address, like, again, like, ten formalities in every sentence. And it's just, like, the feel is what gets you into the setting. It's what makes you feel like this world is alive and like you really get a sense of what this story's personality is and just none of that is present here and because it feels so gaudy with all the cg and all the over exciting music and like the fucking 
oh, like, we have this these crazy fucking maps where it's like, wheel, oh, spaceships on a map and a globe thing. Isn't that cool and modern? And it's like, no, we've been doing this shit since the fucking early 2000s. It's not impressive that you updated a 90s show that looked perfectly fine with fucking swooshy fucking graphs on the screen while nothing moves, you know? Um... Like, no humans move. There's no, like, nothing's animated. There's just CG shit whirling around, you know? Uh, yeah, and it's the same story, so it has no reason to exist. There was no need to remake Legend of the Galactic Heroes, to update it, to change anything about it. It was perfect as it is. There is nothing that needed updating. Why did they do this? That's what I don't understand. It's like... I guess just word of mouth spread over the years has made it into a, a big enough nostalgia property to bring it back? I don't know. Why Why we gotta keep bringing back everything from the fucking 90s? Let it lie. It's fine. Stop just re-release it. it on Blu-ray. Uh, just give me a way to buy the original, you know, and I'll be fine. Sell me shit related to the... Don't make me another show. Don't fucking bother. Just sell me the original. You know? They they brought the the books to the States. That's great. Not this. Uh anyway, did you have anything else to say? No, we watched like ten minutes of it and I don't know. Nothing happened and I didn't care. I I started like I was getting antsy about stopping it because I realized that you haven't seen the original and I don't want this to like tarnish your impression of it. I mean like, I don't like consider modern anime and 90s anime like i don't know i know that the show before it is a classic and i know right. that this is just a reboot so it's just i've like, seen enough shit get ruined this yeah. way where it, like whatever i don't need to i know there's people who are gonna be like impression. it's totally fine it's it's a good show and like i don't even doubt that because of the fact that it is just legend of the galactic heroes again that there probably is quality stuff in this but, like, Probably. knowing the original exists and looking at this and seeing that it's the same story, I'm just like, why would you ever choose this over the original? You prefer you know? pretty boys over... They're already pretty. They're I better know. looking in the original. They're prettier. They were, like, the, the characters in the original are, like, you know, world-class character designs. That there's a reason that these characters have BL being drawn of them today, and it's not because they remade the show, you know? Uh, anyway, that's enough about that. Jesus Christ. Save me. We just watched the first episode of Emiya san uh, uh, Food Stay Night, and it was, like, I guess is alright, but it's just a cooking oh, show. Cute. It was like watching a recipe video that happened to have fake characters in it. Um, very slow, very Iyashike, lots of, like, just silence. Like, characters just, like, stopping and staring off into space. Yeah, there was, like, a moment where um, Saber asked, why is everybody at the market? And then he's like, probably the same reason we are. Yeah, and she's, and like, she's like, oh. staring off. Silence. And I was just like, what? I want to do some kind of research on whether, like, Iyashike shows, like, cause cortisone release in your brain or something. Because at that moment, I became very comfy and sank this low onto the couch. And, uh... You have not risen. No, I have not risen. I am not a shiki um, vampire. I am a, I am a dead corpse. You're a dead. But a um, dead man wonderland. I am a dead man wonderland. Yeah, this God fucking our brains are poisoned. Our fucking brains are utterly poisoned by anime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> yeah, like the weird thing about this is that there is. Nothing distinctive about this show except that it contains the characters of Fate Stay Night. Like, otherwise, it's just a very slow instructional cooking video, except that the guy giving you the instructions happens to be Shiro from Fate Stay Night, which I don't know enough about Fate to know if he's supposed to be a good cook in the context of the series. Like, I don't know if that's an established fact about Shiro. It wouldn't surprise me, but, like, I... It's just like he's making food for the other characters. Saber's there, Ilya's there, that orange-haired bitch who no one talks about and therefore I don't know her name is there. Um, 
Sakurin. Toe Sakurin was shown. Show. Uh, she assumably will be. Ar- everyone's gonna be around, but like, like they don't. In this episode, at least, none of them conveys any personality whatsoever. Like, if you don't already know these characters from Fate and like can just project your knowledge of them onto the characters, then there'd be no reason to think that these were those characters. Like, they look like them, but there's no indication of personality or of any traits that they might have. It's just fake characters being very boring and eating slash making food. Um, And that's what it is. And, like, watching it, like, for instance, not knowing really who the orange-haired girl is or not knowing enough about, like, how Ilya is portrayed in fake, because I've only seen, like, the beginnings of Fate Stay Night, and, like, I mean, Ilya, from, I've seen Unlimited Blade Works, the movie, and, like, she's portrayed as, like, a haughty, like, over-the-top, you know, rich girl. And, like, in Prisma Ilya, she's, like, a goofy, wacky comedy character. In this, she just is there. She likes the kotatsu. She's under the kotatsu. It sure is warm. Show me me really sad that we didn't buy one for our house, because, uh, it would have been... We could have used it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if you if the thought of watching fate characters cook food, and sit under a kotatsu and yeah. stare off into space, literally, it's like Emia just kind of explains like the logic behind why they make this dish for New Year's and makes the dish like literally step by step enough that you could watch it as a recipe video like you could and the episode's only like 11 minutes long so like it's no longer than a youtube recipe video might be um so like if you just want to learn how to cook 12 unique dishes uh and you want emmy ashiro to be your coach for some reason go for it but i saw little reason to continue watching this like if I want to watch a comfy cooking anime, I'll just show you Kofuku Graffiti or something. Um, I... <laughs> so we're going to stay off into space. Okay, we watched two and a half episodes of Yagate Kimi ni Naru, or Bloom Into You, which I covered the first volume of the manga of back in Manga Mondays, and I had really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite of the mini Yuri manga that I covered on that. I did buy volume two, but never got around to reading it. Um, but you haven't read the manga at all. So first I want to know your impressions of this anime, having... Um, I liked the first episode a lot. Um, I was kind of curious about what the dynamic between these two characters was going to be and how we were going to help the main girl kind of move paths to her issues of, uh... Not... Inability to love. Inability to, like, find romance, like... I don't know, just understand it. Yeah. Which, you know, is something that a lot of people do experience. I was, uh, I was interested to watch it because I've heard a lot of people talk and praise the show. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something, you know, to it. It looks really pretty, but, uh, it's very slow. That's the problem with it. And, like, when I was reading the manga, I was interested in the, the fairly unique dynamic of two characters who don't know what love is and they're sort of one of them ends up discovering love through the other and then she feels like almost slighted by that like how damn it like you found it before me through me and i don't understand it Mm -hmm. still and like them kind of trying to explore it together but like uh the anime is just so slow and like the manga i remember plowing through that first volume like it was nothing and like we're three, two and a half episodes in, and, like, we haven't even gotten to the end of that first volume. I think it'll probably go up through either episode three or four. But, um, like, the anime, it spaces everything out a whole lot, and it adds in all this dramatic music. And the visuals are okay, although sometimes there's some cheap corner cutting. There's, like, definitely a lot of textures and, like... I've seen that weird warped texture effect I complained about on last period in places. Yeah. Um, but, like, overall, I'm okay with the visuals. But, like, just the the dramatization of everything, that, like, hallmark feeling, which I feel like a lot of Yuri anime go for. It feels like Yuri almost always tries to have this, like, weirdly kind of self-important, over-dramatic feel to it in the anime versions, 
Whereas the manga was more just like fun and lighthearted and j didn't didn't really give me that vibe. It didn't give me the sad piano ballad yeah, at all it's, times It's weirdly vibe. like porn aimed at women <laughs> in that kind of way where it's like it has to be beautified and like... Yeah. It, I don't know why it's always like that with Yuri anime. Like they're, I don't know if that's just what the crowd who's into it is into because they want it to feel extra sentimental. But I don't feel like manga, I don't feel like Yuri manga goes that route all the time. And this manga, again... Like, I like the characters because of the fact that they are kind of cheery and happy-go-lucky. That, like, they're always smiling and they're more, like, normal. And the story isn't that dramatic. And, it, like, even in the anime, like, what's actually happening is not that dramatic. It's just that the presentation of it is very slow and moving. And, like, my brain can't handle the amount of sad piano music that's in this show. It's a lot. There's no rhythm. No song has any rhythm. It's all melody all the time. It's always piano melodies. And, like, that's not my style of music. I don't really enjoy, like, just hearing that persistently, constantly. No. And, like, I like the voice acting. I like the performances of the main girls, especially the black haired girl. And, like, I still think they come off as entertaining characters, but just when their dialogue is so spaced out and there's so little going on. It's a slow moving story. There's not, like, there's just not, there's nothing gripping about the events. It's just, like, you know, pretty basic feelings, but for some reason those are being heightened to these extremes with the visual, audiovisual presentation. And again, the manga was not like that, and that's what I liked about it. And so, like, I just got really bored, and, like, I could not stop drumming on everything. Like, the lack of rhythm in the soundtrack. I'm sitting here, like, doing death metal vocals and, like, drumming hard on the desk, and, like, I have, like, exciting songs stuck in my head, just, like, anything to keep me awake through the constant... All the time, you know? That was just off the top of my head. That wasn't actually the, the music of the show, but, uh... It's pretty close. It's rare that, like, I find myself, like, dropping a show with, like, my main cited reason being the soundtrack, but I really feel that way. Like, the soundtrack bothered me the most, and just the time between dialogue where, like, characters will say something, and then there'll just be a like, long silence, panning shot of plants, you know, like, lighting change... Just it's so moody for something that doesn't need that for a story this simple, you know. And the manga is like very dialogue driven. There's like you know words on every page. It's it's almost never slow or just like an image taking up the whole page like that, you know. So 